Hey everyone, my name is Charlie and today I would like to share my thoughts on The Soul of Kindness by Elizabeth Taylor. So I began reading this book last week and during the vlog about this book I mentioned a certain thing that I knew was going to happen. In regards to that, what I'm going to say is that if you have this edition then the final sentence of the blurb is actually a spoiler for the entirety of the book and I would say that the blurb actually doesn't do the book justice because this is not just a book that is about the character who is mentioned on the back who is Flora. Flora is this woman who exudes happiness. She has a rose-tinted view of the world and she is also mildly controlling because she wants everything within the world to go how she believes it ought to. So she gets her father-in-law to marry a woman who has been his mistress, which leads to unhappiness for them both. And she keeps trying to pair up this woman called Meg and this man called Patrick, despite the fact that Patrick is gay. And this is a secret that isn't really a secret, but obviously due to it being 1964, when this book was published, the people surrounding Patrick just don't acknowledge the fact that he has got this young man. Although they do try to warn him off Frankie, uh, a young man who seems happy to accept all of the gifts from Patrick, but doesn't really want to share in his love. What I would say about this book is that Flora really acts as the character that the others orbit around. They may never meet one another or they may only know each other by name or, you know, their connections aren't really there. It's just Flora that is the centre point for them all. Throughout this book, we are really examining loneliness, I would say. You have the character of Eleanor, who is married to an artist and feels that she has been pushed to the wayside for her husband's art. You have Flora's mother, who in the first chapter, Flora has written a letter because she's now marrying Richard to say that she has been a wonderful mother, but it's almost like Flora's now casting off her mother because she believes that she's done her duty and almost just forgets that she exists. You have Patrick, a gay man who is unable to express his affection. And then we have Meg, an, another woman who is now worried that she is going to become a long-term spinster. And all of this really comes to a head in the middle of the novel, in what is the longest chapter, when we get to see everybody on Christmas Day. And all of these people are alone, considering how they're considering their loneliness, they're considering why they haven't surrounded themselves with people. Patrick is wondering why he hasn't gone to Meg or some of the people that he's created as this almost found family. Because whilst he is a gay man and people seem to be accepting of that, they don't really want him around them. You have Flora's father-in-law and Flora's husband who both seem unhappy that Patrick is holding the baby and the baby is calm in his arms yet she cries as soon as they hold him. And I don't know whether Elizabeth Taylor was commenting on something here. That is the main takeaway I had from this book is that it's really a plotless novel looking at all of these people and looking at their lives as they are on their own. And the thing that is mentioned in the final line of the blurb does occur, and it's a big spoiler for the ending, but it almost goes to show how permissive people have become of Flora, and how her rose-tinted view and her controlling behaviour does actually have a, an effect on everyone around her. When they're in her presence, they're basking in her, really, and they're happiness that she exudes, but when she's not there, they are left alone with their thoughts and have to look at their lives. 
and as much as Flora believes the world should be a certain way, these people are actually out there navigating it. It's probably, at the moment, it's my favourite Elizabeth Taylor, but I feel like, do I think that every single time I read a new Elizabeth Taylor? What I can say on top of that is that this book left me feeling like I'd read a great book and I didn't know where to go after this, and so I was looking for something mediocre, and I didn't find that either, because <laughs> the next book I read after this also proved to be great. I will talk about that at another point. Either way, I think that if you were looking to read more of a thoughtful Elizabeth Taylor, then this would be a place to go, because I think that she says a lot in a rather small volume. That's The Soul of Kindness by Elizabeth Taylor. If you have read this one and would like to discuss it, then please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope that you have enjoyed this video because until next time, that is all.